got an Instagram page. You see Ole Lugie exhibiting this behavior. Putting the female in here with the shell and seeing if she'd look after her fry. Just a little tip for you guys if you want to try something different. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So I've got a bit of an announcement to make and that is I've got an Instagram page, finally. I've had a couple of you guys request and ask me if I do have an Instagram page. So I've decided to bite the bullet and make one. There isn't much on there at the moment, but I'm looking to post there more frequently over the coming weeks. So if you don't want to wait a full week for an update on my fish room, make sure you're following me on Instagram because I'll be posting there more frequently. And now with this week's video, I'm going to be giving you some updates on what's happened with the spawning activity in the fish room. So let's get straight into it. They're loopy, they're exhibiting some uh, courtship behaviour. They're shuttering their bodies around, coming into contact with each other. See the female just following the male around. Sometimes the male follows the female around the tank. But yeah, they're getting into breeding behaviour. I suspect there might be some spawning activity soon. But if you see your lay loopy exhibiting this behaviour, you know you definitely have a pair. The female submits to the male's dominance. I've said this before, if she tries to swim away from you, you'll chase her and potentially bite her. It's like if you try to run away from an aggressive dog, it's going to chase you. Uh, not all the time, obviously, but uh, yeah, with Lay Loopy, that's definitely what happens. So look at this courtship behaviour here. You'll see them shudder. Their bodies following around, following each other around the tank. It's really beautiful to see. Especially when they already have so many fry in the tank. So they generally don't like me having my camera in front of them or my mobile phone. This is the, but yeah. So they generally don't like my camera out. They, they, they're quite comfortable with me just looking at the tank and having my head pretty much right up against the front pane of glass. At the moment I try to film them, I start to get a bit scared. Uh, they're getting used to, I think they're getting used to this mobile phone camera. They've only been in this tank for about, about, about a month. And I'll get used to my uh, filming equipment in this tank eventually. But yeah, for the time being I'm just filming them in the mobile. And that cave where the female's at, I think is where she wants to spawn with the male now. So she keeps, as you can see her shuddering there. She'll go to the male and quickly swim back to that cave. As in, come with me in here. <laughs> uh, she's trying to lead him into that cave, so they're um, pretty sure that's where they're going to spawn next. So she'll shudder and swim away from him and go to that cave, and eventually he'll follow her in and I'll get some spawning activity going. Here we go. Look at that behaviour there. That's what you want to see from your pair of Lely Bee if you're trying to breed them. That behaviour. Courtship in the Neoleoprologus Lely Bee world. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? I'm absolutely loving this tank at the moment. They're exhibiting beautiful colour. Amazing behaviour. They're just coming right up towards me with the camera. And they've got a ton of fry in here. This is the other spot the female keeps bringing the male to. Uh, she's dug this little pit. It'd be awesome if she was to spawn around this area because I'd be able to get some fantastic macro shots of the eggs and the development of that spawn, but we'll see. I'm not holding my breath for that one. And here's the baby calvus, my white Atolamprologus calvus fry. They've been in here for about a week and a half now. And as you can see, they're doing quite well. Uh, they're eating some baby brine shrimp here. And I've pulled out from the parents' tank about 60 fry. Now, if you saw a couple videos ago, I mentioned I was playing with the idea of putting the female in here with the shell and seeing if she'd look after her fry. I left it a little bit too late 
and fry were coming out of the shell and were all over the tank. So I had to catch the fry out and put them in the tank, do my usual process, and um, unfortunately that means I'm gonna have to wait until they spawn again, and then I'll try that experiment. So um, unfortunately you guys will have to wait a little bit longer to see how that goes. But yeah, these guys are, yeah, like I said, are just over a week free swimming. And uh, you can see they're eating the baby brine shrimp quite well there. Really happy with how they're going. And we'll see how they go in a month's time. And hopefully we don't experience the dreaded die off. So this next tip comes from my cousin, Adam. He's got a lot of baby bristlenose catfish just like I do. And he's been experimenting with some foods for them. Over the last few months, he's been feeding them this can of green beans. Coles and Woolworths in Australia sell their own brand of green beans and I'm sure my other subscribers around the world, their local grocery store would be selling their own branded version of these green beans. Split them up with your hands, they're very soft, they, they come obviously pre-boiled, ready to eat, just chuck them in the tank, catfish love them. My, unfortunately my local grocery store doesn't have these so I've got to go a little bit further to get the green beans but they also sell whole baby carrots in a can so I gave these a try and my baby bristlenose catfish love them. Just again, break them up because they're very soft. Just break them up as you put them in the tank. Give access to the food a little bit easier for your babies. They can't get past the skin layer as much as the adult bristlenose catfish. So just squash them a little bit with your hand. You can see that in the footage here, what I do. And uh, they've readily taken to the baby carrots. Uh, I've noticed when I boil carrots, they don't take to it as much as uh, this stuff in the can. So I was a bit surprised by that. I don't know what, there's, there's nothing really different with it. Um, they're not salted. These green beans, this can here, is salted. I have bought the unsalted variety. Bristlenose catfish love them, but I've, I've heard that the salted variety is, is fine to give them. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable giving them the salted variety, you can just give them a rinse under cold water and that will be fine. Just a little tip for you guys, if you want to try something different for your bristlenose catfish, save you buying fresh veggies and boiling them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously, uh, but if, if you don't have the time, uh, just buy these cans have them in your cupboard for when you don't have time to do all that. Put them in a bowl, glad wrap in the fridge, they'll last a few days like that. And uh, I'll go through a can in two to three days and then I alternate and I'll be feeding in the pellet food as well. So I always tell you guys, mix the food up for, for your fish, ensuring you give them a wide range of vitamins and minerals that they need to grow into healthy adult fish. So there you have it guys, Instagram update, all the spawning activity that's happened in the fish room and some tips to feed your bristlenose catfish and cichlids on the cheap. Really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.